In 2000, a modified glutamate umami receptor was identified by a team of scientists from University of Miami. After this identification, umami has been recognized as a fifth taste scientifically. This was the moment that non-Western taste concept was successfully adopted into Western scientific framework. The concept of umami as a fifth taste has been claimed by Japanese scholars, particularly from the 80s. Around the same time, the Ajinomoto-related researchers revealed their nomenclature as they were required to find a suitable name for the taste of glutamic acid. They agreed to respect the priority and the use of terminology established by Ikeda, who had first discovered and named umami. This work has since been re-evaluated, leading to the revival of umami from the 80s. A large proportion of umami and glutamate-related research conducted over the last two decades has been funded by Ajinomoto Company, but through several umami organizations. The research which led to the identification of umami receptor in 2000 was also partly funded by the Umami Manufacturers Association of Japan, particularly during the early stages of the study. The direct acknowledgement that Ajinomoto funded umami research was not generally perceived as being good publicity because it suggested that the research was too commercial. I'd like to introduce another comment from my another informant, informant who is still currently working for an umami organization. Ajinomoto established the Umami Manufacturer Association of Japan and the Society for Research on Umami Taste. Since it sounds commercial, if the research funding is from Ajinomoto company, people might think that the research shows only good results and self-serving data for the company and industry. If the research money comes from the industry, so that we try not to use the company's name. So one way or other, the other. Research funded by Ajinomoto has played a significant and central role in the process by which umami has become, uh, umami has come to generally recognized as a fifth taste. Umami organization activities are variously targeted on different groups of people, including ordinary consumers, scientists, researchers, chefs, and children. In the celebration of the 100 year's anniversary of Ikeda's discovery, the company planned to devote budget and time to a variety of activities in order to promote the concept of MAMI globally since 2008. The campaign seeks to promote the physiological and nutritional function of MAMI based on discoveries made by scientists at their own Ajinomoto Institute of Life Sciences, namely the umami receptors are present in the gut. In 2009, Ajinomoto standardized the packaging of their brand seasoning, which sold in around 100 countries worldwide now. The main change was to emphasize the significance of umami as one of the five basic tastes. For instance, the message on the Japanese package says that when people eat food containing umani, umami, it is tasty because it is a cyan protein in the food. People feel tasty when they eat something that body needs. The significance and safety of umami and of MSG seasoning have been vindicated on the basis of these scientific discoveries. As trumpeted by the catchphrase, umami is tasty and healthy. Another universal future of umami that is emphasized is the relationship between breast milk and umami. It is emphasized that umami is the first taste encountered by a baby, as glutamate is the most abundant of the 23 amino acids in human breast milk. There are also global, some global umami promotions, for instance in the UK, the concept umami has been introduced as a part of the food 
a life, a fact of life program run by the British Nutritional Foundation. In the program, umami features in a sensory evaluation module. The module recommends organizing an umami tasting session using ripe tomatoes or cheese to see whether students detect umami. The purpose of this umami-related dietary education is similar to that directed at umami taste education in Japan. There are also several international umami summits meetings organized by the Umami Information Center. I attended one of the meetings in London last year and I saw Stefan Gates uh, speaking <laughs> as an MD. To conclude, I showed today how Ajinomoto first exploited the receptiveness in modern Japan for scientifically validated food additives and how the commercial messages alerted as concern grew about the chemical character of those additives. And there developed a preference for what was natural. I have described how umami organization developed to promote the concept in support of food industry. The umami industry and its related organization have invested a lot in umami as a scientific and cultural phenomenon. So lastly, what is interesting in particular about umami is not only its commercialization, but also how an abstract phenomenon such as taste can be commoditized in the first place and how it acquires the status of a thing in social cultural context. Thank you. You must be congratulated for keeping going. <laughs> Never mind managing that slide. So yeah. Thank you. A couple of questions. Anybody? Um, um, umami taste and the glutamate. Um, the glutamate, is it a different biochemical structure than the modern sodium glutamate? It's a sodic sodium of glutamate. I'm asking this because uh, as a physician myself, I, I looked into this and I found that monosodium glutamate seems to have a neurotoxic effect and seems a lot of people seem to be allergic to it. Now, I think one salted glutamate is G. I don't think the salted plums uh, contains high glutamate. Uh -huh. But some examples are like shiitake mushroom mm -hmm. or dried bonito flakes. Mm -hmm. And it's um, abundant in kombu seaweed. Mm. So. Because it was, it was designed, was it not, to resemble dried bonito? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, his uh, research because uh -huh. there is no original paper saying this, but what the, one of the reasons why Ikeda started his research was he was eating uh, boiled tofu in, with kombu kelp that his wife made, and he found it something different from just eating tofu boiled in water. So that's something, yeah. Uh -huh. The ex existence of like soup stock, the use of soup stock in Japanese culinary traditions, something. Of course, there are many cultures that use soup stock, but the Japanese stock is something very pure. It's almost close to glutamate, pure glutamate taste, unlike the soup stock from different cultures. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was very struck by your, your uh, reporting. Um, a more recent mode of uh, commercially promoting umami when you talked about it being advertised as tasty and healthy because then that brings together the two categories that, that you were talking about, John, that were kept apart in ancient times. Indeed, work I did in South Wales in the, in the early 80s found people were making a clear distinction with good food which is enjoyable and good food which is healthy. But when I submitted that paper uh, to a journal for, for publication, uh, the French um, referee said, hold on a second, if you enjoy your food, that is healthy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can't accept this paper. <laughs> they did, though.